Hi, my name is Kelly. I'm the Mustang Tech at BMR Suspension. With the BMR Project Mustang, we'll demonstrate how to accurately measure the angle of the engine and the transmission and how this relates to the pinion flange angle. To show just how much the pinion moves with the stock suspension, take a look at this turbocharged 2011 Mustang GT. With the exception of a spherical diff bearing, the rear suspension is stock. The stock bushings are soft and allow for massive amounts of movement under hard acceleration. When the pinion flange raises under load, it is coming up about 3 to 4 degrees. The angle you are going to set the pinion to in relation to the transmission is going to vary depending on the bushing in the upper control arm. For instance, with a stock rubber bushing, there is going to be a larger amount of pinion rise as the soft rubber bushings let the rear end rotate more than harder bushings. With polyurethane bushings, the rear end is not going to rotate as much, so the difference in angles is going to be less. With a spherical bearing, the split will be lower yet, as the rear end will rotate even less. Though the transmission and pinion are on different planes, you want them to maintain parallel angles when accelerating. This will eliminate any unwanted bind or vibration. When installing a new upper control arm, BMR recommends starting with the arm adjusted to the stock length of 9.5 inches for a 2011 and newer Mustang. If you have an earlier S197, your upper arm will be adjusted to 8.5 inches. When measuring and correcting driveline angles, it is important to start at the front and work your way back. Even more importantly, make sure you stay on the same side of the car while taking your measurements. You start by measuring the transmission angle. If the drive shaft is not installed on the car, you can measure off the flat surface of the front of the transmission bell housing or the flat of the front crankshaft pulley. The angle of the crankshaft and the transmission are the same. The angle you get off of the transmission is a fixed angle and will not be adjustable. This angle will be your starting point to set the angle of the pinion flange. When you get to the pinion flange, make sure your angle finder has the same orientation that it did on the transmission measurement. An easy way to do this is with a square. This will give you a true 90 degree angle and a flat surface to measure from. For the pinion flange measurement, there are several places you can measure from. The front of the pinion flange is the easiest to use, but if the drive shaft is installed, you can use the flat surface on the bottom or back side of the flange. When the vehicle is accelerating, you want the pinion flange angle to be parallel to the transmission angle. With the weight of the vehicle on the tires, set the pinion flange angle between 1 and 3 degrees less than the transmission angle. With a spherical bearing, I recommend a 1 degree difference. For polyurethane, I recommend a 2 degree difference. And with the OEM rubber bushing, I recommend a 3 degree difference. The BMR Mustang had a transmission angle of negative 2 degrees, or two places to the left of zero. We chose to run a negative 2 degree driveline angle difference. This is what you see commonly referred to as a negative two degree pinion angle. This means we set the pinion flange measurement to zero, which is two places to the right of negative two on the gauge. Thanks for watching. That's driveline angle. Make sure yours is set properly. Now it's time to get busy on some new products.